this more plateau area, we'll take a look and see about, um, we'll get into the rock range. Won't say anything yet, but okay. give you plenty of notice. Great. Try and do a smash and grab, maybe. Yeah, with a smash and grab. Oh. Well, not the smashing part, but the grabbing part mm -hmm. of the Niskin. Mm -hmm. Not so smashy. So uh, from after, let's see, waypoint three is what we're headed up to next, right? Um, it looks like it takes more of a, the dive track takes more of a westerly jog. I don't know if how that's going to treat you, but you might want to... Uh, Oh, that's going to be straight into the current, hey? Looking at the paper dive plan. It's a, it's more of a gentle, maybe yeah. arc. Well, and I mean, we can continue for 700 meters on this bearing, Yep. right? So. Yep. Yeah, I like that spot, you know, around waypoint three, maybe for a rock collection. Okay, right up here on this shelf. Yeah, between... That shelf and waypoint three sounds like a good place. This shelf and waypoint three. Yeah. Oops, sorry, wrong way. These things are so amazing. They're so mysterious looking. Yeah. Steve, kind of between this shelf and waypoint three, or the two shelves? Yeah, so b between there. Yeah. Copy. Around 3,000 meters. Go for zoom. Okay. They definitely react to the thrusters a lot. I mean, they're not reacting. They're just super light. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. They just flop all around. Something probably beneficial on these seamounts, sometimes you can get squirrely uh, current conditions, switching around with different tidal cycles potentially, or um, you know, internal waves that might result in and faster or more sluggish flows um, in shorter time scales. So if things can be flexible, it's it's better for them. But those sponges, they're committed to a direction, right? Yeah, like you know, the they have some sponges. give. They have a little bit of give. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, they, they're indicative of preva the prevailing current in the area. But, you know, cur uh, sponges also you know, they're, they're not completely helpless like a coral is. They can create, uh, create their own flows inside to pump water through. Oh, wow. Okay. By by the way they, they grow or by, like, flexing? No, they yeah, they have um, small uh, s um, flagellated cells inside their body that all beat at Bridge, in no? synchronization, and it creates a current. I did not know that. Can we continue this move bearing 330 for 100 meters? Is that like similar to, you know, like barrel sponges you'll see in kind of shallower waters? Like you can actually like see the pumping of it sometimes, like the water flowing out almost like a chimney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would be really neat to see that in a glass sponge. I don't know if anyone's really, uh, you know, dyed the water and watched it move through. Yeah. I've actually done that. Uh, yeah? Yeah, we took a dye down and we were able to, a green dye. Yep. We were able to put it down with a manipulator around the sponge and waited for it to cool. flow Ooh. through and watch it come out the osculum. We Very should cool. do that. Yeah. <laughs> shallow water, shallower water, uh, we were doing that in uh, off the coast of BC. Cool. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Isn't that? That's pretty neat. <laughs> it's been driving me crazy since I was second wondering. two of this watch. <laughs> I've been good at not saying anything. Well, also that one... Is that? Yeah, that's been there. It's been there the whole time. It's been there for weeks. Is that? I, I can't un I can't unsee it. That's all I see when it. Like, that's brand new. That was a brand new dome at the start of the last cruise. 
I would just, that just makes me angry to listen to those. Well, did you see the other dome uh, that was on Argus before? Yeah, I've seen a lot of domes, yeah. Yeah. There still got a fair number of these basalt pillows broken open. So this is good a good sign when we get up to the area where it starts to flatten off, we should start to see um, hopefully something that looks like rocks that we can grab. We want to try to avoid a lot of this material like what's what's in front of us, like the talus material. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, kinda I mean, we're not gonna be picky, but uh, you know, if if we can get something that's relatively you know it looks like it's in place that's okay even better um but yeah we're going for crusty as well as in place try and get everyone's needs accounted for Yeah, I'm sort of trying to plan out in my head how to do this, like how to spot a rock, grab the Niskin, grab the rock, sort of, in, and be guaranteed that we've got a good rock, you know? Like, because I don't want to, like, use a Niskin and not have that rock come up or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot, but we can always, if we have to, we can always, like, if we pop the Niskin and it takes a while to find the rock, we can always go back. It'll just cost us some time. Yeah. Is it, would it be easier to do the rock first, or how does that work? Well, so, in theory, if we're trying to move quick, uh, we'd pop the Niskin first, just because we'd probably take off with a rock in hand mm -hmm. and get out ahead again before stashing it in the starboard bio box. Sure. Um, and... I don't think I could pop a Niskin with a rock in hand. No, an option would be, it's yeah. like a pretty big, heavy rock, to set it down on the porch real quick and uh, pop the Niskin. And then if I need to go ahead to stash it in the starboard bio box, I can without risk of it yep. popping out the porch. Got it. I don't know, Josh, does that sound right? Yeah, it's going to be a little tough just because sometimes it takes a bit to pick the rock. like you can actually get you're gonna have to get stretched out ahead of Argus and then find the rock it'll be, it'll be a little tough to do without stopping although these are I don't know yeah I don't know Josh I'm definitely open to advice on this one that's sort of my maybe we could tag team it I mean if yeah wanted, totally I could do I could do the arm while and then that way we could just kind of creep ahead slowly. These ones look all. Am I being fooled right now? By these saying that I could, you could probably yeah. pick up a fair number. We, of these. we could get any of these. Yeah. We're 125 meters too deep, though. Well, I think 120 meters was Steve's margin for. Yeah, this was the starting to look zone. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start to take a look. Uh, Some of those are cemented in, though. I think. You think? Oh, maybe not. It's so hard to tell. I want to wait one more contour, but start to take a peek at what it looks like here. Uh, it looks, yeah, pretty in place stuff. Go for zoom. I would like to get a, a bigger rock since the last two rocks have kind of been on the smaller end. Big rocks. Yeah. We like to hear. <laughs> okay, go on. Are 
they have in the forward box then? Gastropod. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Probably pretty fragile. again here. Don't say anything. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we were all feeling that, you know. These are unspoken words. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Oh yeah, if we stop, it's at least half an hour to 45 minutes, for sure. Yeah. If we get all poised, you know, and get the arm out front, if you kind of keep creeping, you know, we'll try and pick a rock quickly. I like your idea of maybe picking one and setting on the porch, and then pulling them up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The ones on the right hand side look really nice for crust. Cause they're all lumpy. Uh, but again, that means they're all crusted in. Yeah. It looks like a big collapse or something. Yes, oh. we are at little plateau number one. All right. Oh, yeah, thanks. All right, got buried in gauges. Let's keep going just to see how it turns out. Roger. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I really don't know. Um, you can try and poke it if you want to, just to see what it composition's like. Uh, but I suspect that there's plenty of loose material here. We 
Yeah. 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 I, sounds good to me, <laughs> says the biologist. <laughs> now that I'm done pontificating about things I haven't studied, back on SPL. It's kind of what SPL is all about. Oh, OK. <laughs> learning. It's about learning. The science, science <laughs> pontification <laughs> line. Your whole career. Talking about stuff I don't know. <laughs> Science Not just talking, pon like pontificating. Pontificating. I, I do like that. I'm sure he named out the science pontification line. SPL. <laughs> I mean, just for you, Gabby. We don't have to change. We can still call it SPL, so it works. <laughs> Some of the best ideas in science are born on SPL, <laughs> birthplace. <laughs> That's a neat shape of a rock. This yeah. is a very cool. cool rock. Yeah. Little, yeah. Pretty stoked about this one. It, it makes me feel like, yeah, some of these actually might just be broken from stuff that's higher up. Oh, okay. For some reason. That one, yes. But some of the smaller stuff, I think, is, is yeah. more local. Yeah. Like that one could have come a bits. long way. Yeah. Yeah, you never know how far they come up from because you know, things can break off up top and fall down slope. Yeah, it's tough to only get one rock per sort of area. That last rock, though, like I really felt like that was pretty local. Like, yeah, there was just like three of them in a little sand pit. Yeah. But yeah, so one of the things that makes me think that you know some of this stuff may not have been here for very long is you know, that there's not a ton of biology attached, and usually oh, interesting hmm. that um, you know the biology that's slow growing typically needs stable substrates, and talus material might not be that. Uh, but you know, there's some bits here that are really solid too that have probably been here for quite a while, so. Um, it's tough to say whether it's just flow conditions are not right for the biology or it, the substrate might be unstable, unsuitable. Uh, I'm going to change our bearing to 315 on this next move to keep us top of the ridge. It's awesome. Within our ra working range. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have your fingers and toes crossed, right? Yes. Okay. Bridge, nav. Can we move bearing 315 for 100 meters? Correct. Yeah, let's let's look um let's look maybe Plan to maximize your stretch for somewhere around waypoint three, and we'll try and pick up a rock in that vicinity so you have the maximum amount of time for a smash and grab. Roger. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What is that about? Oh, this is a beauty. Quick zoom. Oh, wow, yeah. Another great tuna get. The little brittle star on the back. Right. Oh, yeah, just at the bottom. Okay, go wide. Go 
the Iron Man helmet. Remember when we looked at those ones? That oh, yeah, yeah, those were really cool. Josh, did you want to grab this one? Sure, yeah. Okay. If you, you want to stretch out and I can just kind of have the arm up. Yeah, yeah. And I'll it is in flautist position. Yeah, it's okay. Okay. I won't change it. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Well, I'm paranoid about moving that thing too much. Mm -hmm. I think we're still a little ways off by point three. Right back. Survey. Yeah. Ship length. Looks like we have a bunch of new viewers popping on. I think the East Coast is starting to wake up. So welcome to our late night watch. Thanks for following along. Uh, we are currently exploring an unnamed seamount and uh, we've been diving for about eight hours now or just over. Um, so some people have asked kind of where we started. We started at around 3,900 meters in depth um, and we are working our way across the seamount looking for geological samples right now. So we've been taking them at different depths and now we are close to 3,000 meters which is one of our target depths. So we're searching for rocks and hopefully we'll take a sample. But thanks for joining us. I'm wondering if in areas like this where it's mostly really consolidated, like something like what's in the center here, that's probably like 30 or 40 centimeters, but like that one might be local, so it also might be attached, I suppose. That's all looking pretty cemented to me. What's that? It's all looking pretty cemented to me. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's tough to tell. But. Oh, here's lobster. our white squat lobster. Yep. Here's my chance. Hey, buddy. I feel like he's posing too, like sunning yeah. himself or something. <laughs> Go for zoom. Oh, it's taking off. <laughs> yep, super fast. Oh, I love these guys so much. Yeah, they're really neat. Yep. Nice. Squat lobster, probably mun uh, Munidopsis is the okay. genus name. Okay, go one. Very good. It seems like a big squat lobster. Is that? Yeah, size. he's like 10 centimeters across. Yeah. He is really big. I'd be ready for another Doppler reset. Roger.
Very nice. Colophagus again. What about these rocks over to the right-hand side? Do you feel comfortable with those? Yeah, I'm not super stretched out right now. Okay. We can um, focus we on could this do loose. Yeah. Yeah, they they look like the right size, and they're we got I, we can we can probably get this to work. Yeah. I'm just not stretched out. They look loose. Yeah, they definitely do. One of the the bigger ones looks like there's some small maybe nodule-like things too. Yeah, these are these bigger. There's one nodules? right in front of your toes. Yeah. And a yeah, there we go. Either right on the lasers or the one right under it. It's just okay too. Beautiful. That's a nice one. Shall we? Sure. Okay. So that depth is 3074. Just going to put this down for a sec. Yep. Uh, video, can we get some good iris for the... Uh... Roger. Yep. Okay. So we have uh, five, four, two, and one available, Niskins. There you go. You got it? Yep. That was uh, okay. can four. Move. You can jump up and I'll take Okay. Yep, Niskin 4 there popped. That corresponds with rock sample number 008. Yeah, so the Niskin will be the 9. Yeah. And uh, if you could put this in one of the smaller partitions, I think it should be fine on the starboard side. That'll be lovely. You're directly under Argus. Up. We can go for... You want to just Very hold nice. it for a sec? I can shoot out in front. Oh yeah, brittle star Ooh, on brittle the bottom. Brittle star, yeah. Yeah, you can you can hop up, I think. Okay, sounds good. Very nice crusty rock. Beautiful. Tether action going on in the back. Yep. Things are looking good right now. Uh, we got a really nice big delta. get this entered first so we can make sure we get a good uh, position on that. There was a big coral right on the side of us there. Oh, it's the pink sand star. <laughs> the one that we escaped last time. We'll see, an we'll see another one. Yes, we will. Definitely well. So can you, so I'm seeing like a loop. Yeah, I saw it. I think if you just keep driving. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just up. directly underneath. Yeah, coming up. Oh, the terrain just got a little bit wild. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And the small nodule field there, too, under that rocky outcrop. So if you could just, yeah. we do need to do the winch. If you could do the winch and then yeah, uh, I can totally maybe just do that. open the drawer for me. Yep. You ready? I think so. Um, okay. Draw coming out. There 
go. Ready for sample sure. solo? Yeah. Yeah. Nicely done. So that went in B? Yep. Yep. Ready for dive salvo again? Sure. Okay. Onward. Yeah, nice. And uh, I think we got a pretty good rock that time, but of course, as the law says, as soon as you collect a rock, you see a better one. Yep. <laughs> that is the law of the land. So I think we got a pretty good, pretty I good sample honestly, there. I honestly, I think that uh, that'll be a hard to beat rock. That's so. a nice crusty rock, yeah. yeah. I agree. Looks great. So Steve, some questions from viewers. Once we bring these rock samples to the surface, what are kind of the next steps? What are we looking for with these? Yeah, on the ship, our next steps are really to uh, just document uh, the rock, uh, describe it a little bit better in situ uh, okay. than in the lab. So we'll do imagery <laughs> of it. Um, we'll do some more descriptions nice. of it. Uh, we'll subsample any biology that might be attached, like that brittle star uh, will become part of our collection that we'll send to uh, partner museums for a scientist ashore. And uh, after that, uh, we really, uh, we may have some uh, subsampling of the rock for the crust on the ship, but more than likely, the rocks will just be dried and go back to our rock repository at the University of Rhode Island, uh, where they will be sectioned uh, and utilized by geologists for whatever their needs are. Um, so they have the knowledge and the tools there to do that more effectively than we have to do it, uh, than we have at sea here. But it, we do have the ability to break rocks up if we need to, uh, but for the most part, we're just gonna be documenting them and, and sending them on. And similar question from another viewer. What do you do with our Niskin samples? And what are we looking for with those? Yes. Uh, so Niskin samples are a little bit more complex. We have a few operations we're doing on the ship this time. So if you were with us last expedition, we, uh, we were doing eDNA sampling, which is basically just filtering out kind of the extracellular DNA from the water column, you know, DNA that occurs naturally in mucus and um, you know, food particles and things like that, uh, and trying to understand if we can detect things like corals uh, from the material they shed off into the water column. And uh, it's a it's it's a method in development. Uh, it's had some success, um, but it's very poorly uh, uh, deployed on seamounts. So, because seamounts are so big, and we only have a small little camera and ROV, if we can detect things that we can't see, uh, we're expanding our ability to characterize the site. Um, so that's one thing we do with the water. We'll filter it for eDNA and preserve that. And then the other thing we'll do is uh, we have a project on board to characterize metals uh, concentrations. Um, Coralie, who was uh, one of our data loggers on the previous watches, is going to be doing some characterization and measurements of metals, preserving uh, sample for metal analysis um, back in our laboratory. So uh, we'll be doing both of those water sampling types. We'll just need a few liters, but you know, each Niskin holds about five liters. That's a very nice- uh, That's a great sponge. Yeah. Wow. Looks like- Yeah, uh, look at that. We don't need any samples for a while, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. 
So oh, is this, what is a that, cool oh, is view, that the though. Osculum, like the whole yes. thing, the osculum? Yes. Yeah. Is that what we're seeing there? Yeah, this looks like, um, I think this is a stocked one as well, but uh, okay. this one actually might be in a different family from the ones we've been seeing. This is probably... Video, can you zoom without, like, totally blowing it out? This is probably Bolosoma. Yeah, feel free to do whatever zooms you the, want in here. Another kind of glass sponge. But, yeah, great. You can see it has a sieve plate. The sieve plate is kind of that structure, the webbing you see across top of it. Um, on top of all the oscula, the oscula are the openings where water is being uh, ejected from the sponge. It's Typically big goes too. Look at it in um, in Argus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just looking there. It's really large. It's a very cool view. Yeah. Very nice. Cool. Okay, go like frame it up once more. That's cool. And oh, can man. we get the lasers? Do lasers off? off? Roger. Ready to get them? Lasers are off. Nice. Great. Cool. Are you ready to skedaddle? Ready to go. Okie dokie. Put lasers back on as well. And go wide. I wonder how the reception here is down there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Think it's microwave internet? <laughs> A little old school. So, Steve, you're saying that. Um, Kind of the webbing looking part of the sponge was a sieve plate? Yeah, sieve plate. It's uh, usually uh, on top of sponges in the family Euplectelidae, which this one I believe is. And it kind of seals uh, the inside of the sponge, uh, but it allows water to pass through. Do we get a tilt check? Sometimes. Uh, you Roger. The sponge will actually trap associated animals Very inside, and the they live down. inside the sponge too, kind of as a, a symbiotic relationship. I didn't see any in there. This one here is a uh, Colophacus, the other family we've been seeing. Definitely uh, on top of these promontories, a lot more of these angular rocks, um, you know, basalts and. What I think are, you know, small pockets of nodules, too. These look pretty in place, but we definitely saw some nodule pockets uh, a bit deeper. Very round, orb-like um, rocks on the sediment. Oh, that's awesome. Wow, that's a very cool view. Looking yeah. through that. I'm so behind, though. I'm way out of quarters. Need to re up. We've been moving this entire watch. We've almost moved a kilometer. That's awesome. I think. Is that yeah. the right? <laughs> I think that's good. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Sounds great. <laughs> I feel like that's more than we did on any watch on the last. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. So we, we would move like 250 meters on the last. <laughs> last Com compared to the alternative, yeah. Yeah, exa <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, Not moving. <laughs> yeah. start. We're moving in really random directions is actually what we're up against. These sponges are just awesome. Well, really we like have them. a we have a very ambitious dive plan in my opinion, uh like something like 7 kilometers. <laughs> so we're so, just doing our part. <laughs> so yeah, we're 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 just doing our part. We get things done here on the 12 Gosh, to 4. This is so cool. I love how these guys have like a chimney like yeah. on the top. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not one to like to sit around. I like to see the transitions and change in the biological mm -hmm. community, and you really can't do that over a few hundred meters. You have to sandy do that over spot. kilometers. What's that? Well, sandy spot. Yeah. Look at this. No ripples. Unbranched bamboo coral.
Sometimes it's fun to sit in like one sp in one spot for like a whole watch and just get like really beautiful video of everything. Circle around one large but I'm walk. Di I'm digging this. This is pretty fun yeah. to just keep moving. And to like not have the option to stop. You're like, okay, well, <laughs> I guess this is what we're doing. Yeah, I one of the most fascinating dives I've ever done has been one of these continuous dives. And we were a few years ago off of Jarvis Island in okay. the Pacific Remote Islands. And uh, there's a very long ridge that comes off of that island. And uh, if you move up along the ridge, you can actually see transitions between different coral communities where you'll have one like stand of corals and then you know, cross a feature and then you have another stand of corals and then oh, just yeah. transitions over and over all the way up to 200 meters. And it was amazing to see that kind of uh, effect because, you know, usually we drop down, we do 700, 800 meters. We don't see transitions, but we see what the community is like. But to see it in real time is yeah, um, that's awesome. really awesome. But I suspect we'll see it here too. We're only going up to about 1,800 meters today, uh, but we started quite deep. And uh, even though we're only going up to 18, we should see some uh, higher density coral and sponge communities uh, sometime in the next few hundred meters, I would say, vertical. Uh, but our next rock collection isn't for quite a while. Um, let's see. 2,500 meters is what we're looking for, or okay. about our next rock collection. How many kilometers away is 2,500 meters? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just spacing out on that whole conversation. <laughs> so it took me, I was like, what are you asking me? <laughs> oh, God. I think I'm asking if we get to grab any more rocks this watch. Mm. I'm really impressed that we've covered a K. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah, very nice bamboo coral colony here. We start to see these uh, around this depth, and they'll be with us for the next few hundred meters vertical. Not too many associates on these colonies, but you know, impressive nonetheless. Go for zoom. Thank you. Yeah. We do have a scientist ashore who is studying these, um, as well as a master's student who's trying to better understand. Uh, yeah, great. So this is uh, probably a declayed uh, keratoicidid bamboo coral. Um, and I'll kind of explain what that means, but basically it's a sparsely branching coral colony uh, that usually branches right above the node, which is spot on for this, uh, as well okay, as tall polyps. And uh, Bamboo corals are largely in a state of transition. They have had a very complex uh, taxonomy um, for many decades, um, but they're just now being revised so that we can better classify them into um, more similar, similar groups related to their genetic composition as well as their morphology. And uh, since not a lot of them have uh, unique genus and species names, we often lump them into groups called clades, which is a not a formal taxonomic rank, but something that resembles, you know, it's groups of species that are more similar to each other than to other groups. Swimming shrimp. Oh, yeah, look oh, at him. Look at him go. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello, tunicate. Whoa. It's a big one. Yeah, I should uh, look up the name for those because it escapes me at the moment. Turning to face us. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh, Whoa. that's really unsettling. <laughs> it really oh, is. Wow, I love this view. Yeah, uh -huh. I know. I'm sorry. I'm running out of running out of zoom coins. They are so wild looking. Culeolus is the genus name for those. Tunicates in the family Q Pyuridae. Culi, say it. Can you say it again? Culiolus. Culiolus. More, I guess, would you call these columnar basalts? Uh, uh, or just the pillow, exploded pillows, or? Yeah, I mean, they, um, you know, let's, uh, let's just call it a you know, more columnar than pillow, but it could be a pillow. You can have pockets of both now. Don't ask me to explain how columnar basalts form because I've reached the end of my geology <laughs> words. <laughs> um, I guess if I recall from last expedition, they s kind of build over time slowly, and it's the uh, when they're cooling the crystal formation. Does anybody else agree from Andrea's lesson? Oof. I was, I was elsewhere. <laughs> I do not remember. Sounds right. Kate, you're now our basalt expert. <laughs> oh, no. I take it back. <laughs> oh, no. That'll learn ya. <laughs> There's some stuff going on here. Is this another branching bamboo? Yes. It's probably similar to the sparse branching bamboo we just saw. Yep. Okay. What's the white thing? But it's got a bunch of associated organisms we can okay, take a look we at. we can look at some of those, yeah. Okay, we can do a zoom. Yeah, so it looks like uh, bamboo coral uh, plus some barnacles here. Oh yeah. Some stock oh, barnacles. Yep. Very cool. You can see the. Yep, there they go. They're all Close pulling enough. in. I'm gonna try and look up and get the other associates up here. Yeah, there's some other. Barnacles busted. and maybe a crinoid. Go for zoom. Barnacles it's and a crinoid. It's not the best light there, but. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Cool. And an uh, anemone. Uh, there's a small oh, yeah, closed yeah, a anemone. Yeah. Okay, go wide. Sometimes they're called ring ring anemones. Uh, they kind of, t their uh, pedal disc kind of wraps in a ring around the bamboo uh, coral or any coral stock. Uh, they typically take advantage of wounds uh, on coral colonies where there's maybe bare skeleton to attach. Okay. That's interesting because I kind of thought that they caused that bare skeleton, but you're saying they they wait they find a spot that's already bare. Yeah, so there's a couple of ways that corals can become wounded um, predation by sea spiders or sea stars. Uh, also, typically where you have um, maybe abrasive action like those spiny brittle stars, the Ophiocanthids. Wherever they hang on to coral colonies, often it'll cause some tissue loss, just uh, you know, over time, um, from my observations. So if you have tissue loss in somewhere in the colony, there's a good chance that some sort of 
animal can take advantage of that, like uh, these uh, suspension feeding barnacles or anemones. There's weather, I got weather up here if you want to see it. It's, uh, man, this is set to Trevor size font. Like 50 knots of wind and kind of one and a half. That's it's doing okay. Oh, there we go. There's a black coral. Uh, bathy pathies we just passed. I'm sure we'll see more. Black corals, yeah. There's a fair amount of particulate matter in the water column from what we can see, so that could indicate that this is a pretty good feeding area for suspension and filter feeders. Mm -hmm. So Steve, science Steve, mm -hmm. some questions coming in about um, the depths that we see corals and sponges. How deep have we kind of seen corals and sponges, I guess, anywhere in the deep sea? And then for some of our viewers, they're curious, you know, we started this dive at about 3,900 meters. I don't know if you know if we were seeing a lot of sponges and corals at the beginning of the dive. Um, but yeah, just some curiosity about how deep these corals go. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I don't think we have a really good understanding of the maximum depth limit. We just start to see them less frequently as we go deeper. Uh, what have we here? Yeah. Maybe Is some this, trash? This might just be garbage, yeah. It's so, yeah, it's so circular. Yeah, I think so. Okay, nothing to see here. That's one of the coins for the zoom machine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh, hi. Whoa. Hello. Look at that. What are you? I want to see more of this. So what we have here is a bamboo coral, uh, although I suspect it's different from the sparsely branching one since it has more highly branched structure. Um, but some, something we can take a look at. Yeah. It's a little steeper here than I thought. This is definitely deceptive terrain. You don't have to sit down. We can just kind of pirouette around if it's easier. 
Uh, Your call. Yeah, yeah, just to get the polyp zoom. Yep. Much this is the Dan special. Yeah. The polyp zoom, zoom is very, very helpful. There we go. Full Beautiful. Zoom. Yeah. Wow. Oftentimes you'll see small critters like uh, amphipods or isopods uh, or mycid shrimp or something like that, kind of around and perched on the corals. Yeah, Great. Oh, awesome. So you awesome. can see them closing up their tentacles, too. Bridge, Nav. It's neat. You can really see okay. the flow of the like marine okay. snow Go wide. going yep. by there, too. Yep. Bearing 315, so 100 meters. A potential chance that they all just, you know, maybe got some food particles when they all closed up, or they could have sensed some disturbance from Herx thrusters. Oh, and the pirouette. Very nice. Yeah, so th this could either be a, a very large sparse brancher, but it has uh, a lot more highly branched uh, bits uh, towards the branch tips. So I, I suspect it might be something different, but still this is great imagery that will help us make that determination later on. But uh, something in the family, Corrado Isididae, newly established family just within the past few months. Okay, time oh, to go. Really? Wow. Newly established, but um, it was previously a subfamily, then it was elevated to a full family, mm. and the we're bamboo corals were a little bit, right? split a little bit. into mm. multiple families. We're on a sort of shelf, so um, with these 10 meter contours, there might be some micro topography yeah, just in a there. Tiny but bit. Yeah. Um, we will have to change our bearing coming up. And at the end of the next move. Okay. That's what fine. was the question we had before we saw that? Yeah, we were talking about depths of corals and sponges and kind of how deep you've seen them, and then if you knew if we saw any in the earlier parts of our dive when we were around 3,900 meters. Yeah, I I don't uh, have the data from earlier in the dive, but it's absolutely possible to have corals much, much deeper uh, than what we see them here. So it, it's not unusual to see, for example, octocorals uh, down to several thousand meters. Um, I I think the deepest published record is somewhere around around 6,000 meters, mm. uh, and I think it was a sea pen. Um, and then for black corals, it's also, uh, we've seen them quite deep, but you know, on the order of six, 7,000 meters, you see uh, genera like uh, abyssopathies, uh, quite common. This is a black coral um, in the Schizopathidae family. They are very, very fragile looking animals. Uh, I can actually pull up a photo here. Maybe well, here's another one of these. Oh yeah, another like more stops. densely branching bamboo. Ooh. Right? You think so? Oh, yep. This is this is what we're doing That's, here. Yeah. Wow. So this is one of the deepest dwelling corals that I've ever sampled. I think we sampled it at 5,700 meters, um, but they're very fragile oh, animals, wow. abyssopathies. That's uh, on the ch chief Sai computer. Uh, video wants to pipe that out on channel three. Oh, wow. Yep. We're looking at a bamboo coral again here. They're getting bigger, so that's a good sign that we're moving into more favorable